Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all you Akim out there pushing this word with all truth and sincerity, and to all you believers out there who believe in on the gospel. It's the brother Kwara Abad from the GMS Houston camp. And uh, I want to come at y'all with another um, another lesson. And, um, you know, as always, law willing to be edifying. But I just want to um, hit on this verse. You know, it's just one pretty much a quick hit lesson. You know, uh, you know, well, we go ahead and read one verse and just, uh, you know, uh, speak on it through the spirit. And what other precepts the Lord, you know, feed us with, then we'll go ahead and bring out. But, you know, other than that, uh, we'll get straight to it. This is uh John 16 and 33, man, because um and what what made me want to speak on the scripture is that we see the times that we are in and how um it's gonna get even worse from here on out, man. We are in the beginning times of uh a time like never before that have been on the earth, man, as it said in the scriptures, the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, uh, we are about to witness things that um we probably only thought we was going to see on a movie, man. Or things, well, shit, things we would have never thought we was going to see. Well, look, we are in the beginning stages of that, man. And doing this, doing all this hell that's about to break loose and shit hitting the fan, we going to need a sense of comfort, man. We going to need a sense of hope, you know. And this truth that we have going to allow us to get through the current condition we may be in, you know, and get through the, the the situation the Lord gonna put us in as uh as days as the days go by to the coming of the Lord, man. Right? But as the scriptures say, John 16 and 33, the Shahwa Shah speaking, he says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace, but in the world ye shall have tribulation. It says, But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You see, I'm going to read it again. It says, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. And who is this speaking again? Yahweh Shai. Now, how are we having peace in Yahweh Shai? Don't the scripture say in John 1 and 14 that the word became flesh? So Yahweh Shai is the word. So within these, these scriptures, we have a sense of comfort, man, that hope. We have peace. We are resting. This is our rest right now. This is our comfort, man. So it says... Um, that in him we have peace, but in the world we shall have tribulation. In this world we are now with everybody going through shit and about to go through more shit. Everybody ain't going to have that peace during tribulation. Everybody ain't going to have comfort um, and, you know, hope and faith to rely on wisdom and knowledge to keep them stable in that time, man. But in Yahweh Shai, we have everything we need. That's why Yahweh Shai, he are, uh he would make the, the statement and say, uh, if you eat of his bread, you ain't going to hunger again. And if you drink of his water, you're not going to thirst again. In other words, once you get this doctrine and the understanding of this truth and the understanding on the course of the world, then you satisfy. You don't need nothing else. Right? You don't need nothing else. That's how we have peace. We have peace knowing that captivity ain't going to be forever. We have peace knowing that we just ain't going to have to just be in America working the rest of our life with a mask on, man. We have peace to know that wickedness will be, uh, will come to an end one day, man. But everybody ain't going to have this same peace or comfort, especially during tribulation, during Jacob's trouble, man. Let me get this real quick. First Maccabees 12 and 9, it says, therefore, we also, albeit we need none of these things, right? We don't need nothing else. We don't need another doctrine because another doctrine can't comfort us. Another doctrine can't give us the promise of if we do the work, we going to eat and drink in a time of famine. Another doctrine can't tell us that when these missiles come, first, another doctrine can't even tell us what's to come. No other guy can tell us what's to come. Like me and a brother, y'all, and I was talking uh, yesterday, and we was like, bro, no, no other uh, philosophy or, you know, God uh, or even a, a gift can amount up to what the Heavenly Father, how about she, how shy I got, man? You know? So we don't need nothing else. We don't need a, a bribe. We don't need help from Esau. 
We don't need the comforts of this world to be okay in these times. But what we need, it says, albeit we need none of these things, that we have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us, man. You see that? So we don't need nothing else. All we need is the scriptures. In other words, all we need is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. You know, because again, Yahweh Shai is the word. You know? And uh, through this word, going through this 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 narrow path that we're going to have to cross um, to the kingdom, like I said in Revelation, uh, not Revelation, Salakia, like I said in Second Ezra, you got fire on one side, water on one side, so deep, only one man can go there at once. But through this path, we have Yahweh Shai, because at the same time, we follow in that lamb, whatsoever he goeth, man. Matter of fact, since we mentioned through that fire... <laughs> It made me think of Isaiah 44. And like I said, you know, I just had that, that uh, John 16 and 33, you know. So we're just going to pull a couple precepts, you know. And after this, if nothing else come out, go ahead and end it. But this is Isaiah 40, 43, I believe. Yep, Isaiah 43 and 2, it says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. So when the trials and tribulations come, the Lord said he's going to be with us. It says, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Like when Peter, he was walking on the water. When he started drowning, who was there to save him? Yeah, how was I lift Peter up out that water, man? In a fire. Well, it's because the next, the next part says, and they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why didn't they get burnt? Because it said uh, in Daniel, that the spirit of the son of God was in that man. Yahweh Shah was in that. So guess what? The same thing for us. <laughs> through this tribulation we going through, the Lord going to have to, not have to, right? But if we're the elect, the Lord going to be there for us, man. You see, he made the promise. He ain't going to go back on his promise. You know, he ain't going to go back on his promise. Hey, like, well, let me get this. And I said, no, I was temptation. Revelation 3. Revelation 3, but see, going back to that John 16, though, this is the peace that we have during tribulations. This is the peace that we have um, during, you know, captivity. That we know at the end of the day, everything will be all right. Because whatever we go through, like I said in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, the Lord putting us through it. And he ain't going to give us nothing that we can't handle. Whatever we're going through is just enough for us to get through it, man. Every, but look, this is the thing. Why is that? Bringing peace to us and comfort because everybody don't know that. Everybody don't know, <laughs> you feel me, that the Heavenly Father can just control elements and animals and people and do what he wants at his will. But for us, we know. For example, when, when it come down for um, getting tried, man, with the mark of the beast, which you about to read, Esau going to try to torture some of us. But we have that example of Yahweh shot in front of Pilate. You know, when Pilate was like, don't you know, I got the power to crucify you or let you go? What Yahweh Shai told him, you have no power at all against me, except it was given you from above. In other words, Pilate, boy, you can't do nothing to me except my father allow you to do it. So us knowing that, reading that, that gives us a certain comfort to know whatever we go through in that time. If man do something to us or whatever, the Lord is allowing that, but not for us to lose faith. You know, that's another reason why wisdom and knowledge are going to be the stability of our times. Because these things that we are learning in this book, right? The Holy Scriptures will keep us stable, man. Will keep us stable in that time. Real quick, Revelation 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, endured through the suffering, right? And continuing to believe in the truth. Through the suffering, it says, I will also, who is this I? Yahweh Shah speaking. He says, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And this is when everybody get tried with that mark of the beast, man. The RFID microchip. Everybody will be tried during tri this tribulation, right? During tribulation, but everybody won't have this peace that we going to have. Of course, we in the flesh. We might be scared, you know, or... You know, breathing hard, crying, whatever. But ultimately, we know even unto death, if we was to die, the scriptures say, fight for the truth unto death and the, strive for the truth unto death and the Lord shall fight for thee. We know if we come down to death, the Lord could either have us 
be tortured or go through whatever we have to go through and not feel it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ain't feel the fire. Daniel ain't get bit by no lions. You see? In a lion's den. Right? Or even if we do have to die, we know our work is going to follow and we're going to be some of the first ones raised up on a chariot. But all in all, man, knowing what we in now and the times we in and what we coming in, we have a comfort that these other people don't have, man. We have a help and a spirit from Yahweh Bashim Yahushai that these other people don't have. And the water Yahweh Bashim Yahushai for that, man. Barakatha Yahweh Bashim Yahushai for that, man. You see? But let me get uh, some real quick. How was I said? This is um, Matthew 28 and 20. It's Yahweh speaking. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. It's the point. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And to the end of who were Esau? Well, look, Esau still ruling. <laughs> Esau still ruling. So Yahweh Shai got to be with us right now while Esau rule, man. And when Esau finish ruling, Yahweh Shai going to be here because Yahweh Shai going to put it into Esau rulership. And then we're going to forever be with the law from that point on, man. So while we still here in the world, Yahweh Shai is helping us out. Like it's saying, John 17. I don't pray that you take. Let's get that. Let's get that. This is John 17. This is Yahweh Shai again. Because we ain't just. You know, chilling while everybody gonna have to be going through shit. We ain't just gonna be chilling. No, we gonna be in the midst of it too, but it's a difference. Right? The, the servants of the Lord will have a hedge around them. Let's get that. John 17. Yahweh Shai says in 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Right? Don't just make it easy for them and just take them out the world. Because he said himself, the servant ain't greater than master. Right? They persecuted the master. They got to persecute the servant. So we can't take the easy route out, you know, and go around tribulation. No. So the Lord says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. It says, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil, man. You know, so we still here in the world amongst the evil, amongst the, the wicked. And we go be around people who going to be judged. So we're going to be seeing and hearing these things and running right along with everybody else. But the point is, the law going to have that hedge around us the whole time. Other people ain't going to have a hedge. You know, they ain't going to have um, in a family, they got a, a thought in their mind. Well, you looking up ready for ravens to come feed you. They ain't going to have that idea or thought that that's even possible. But we will. Why? Romans 15 and 4, the things that was written a four time was written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope of the scriptures, man. Go and see what the heavenly father did for our forefathers of old when he saved certain men and women out of situations. Well, that give us hope since we serving the same God, right? We serving the same God, Yahweh, same Lord, Yahweh Shai. So when we get in a situation, looking back on what the Lord did for our forefathers and foremothers of old, that gives us hope in these times that this same God gonna do the same thing for us or even greater because we're in a greater time than this so we got to do greater miracles man but going into the point though we have peace in knowing that we have peace in knowing this everybody don't know this let me get one more scripture this is psalms 94 and 12 that's the spirit psalms 94 and 12 it says blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth o yahweh and teaches him out of thy law so once we come into this truth, that's why the scripture said, prepare thy soul uh, for temptation because the Lord going to put us through shit. But it says, blessed is the man whom thou chastens, O Yahweh, and teaches him out of thy law. So we get chastised and the Lord builds us up. You see, he builds. Matter of fact, let me get one quick push up. I'm going to go back to that. He, he chastises, but he builds us up at the same time. The second... Corinthians 4 and 16, it says, for which cause we faint not, but though I were out with man perish, right? Though we go through shit in the flesh, we take losses in this world again, which I wish I said in this world, we shall have tribulation, right? So that's the tribulation part. We taking so-called L's in the flesh and financial, whether it's family, job, legal, whatever it is. But it's the part that says, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. And that's that peace. That inward man, we grow in knowledge day by day. We grow in faith day by day. You see? 
understanding and getting examples and, and life, daily life tips day by day. You see? So going back to Psalms 94, it says, Blesses the man, and 12, Blesses the man whom thou chasteneth, O Yahweh, and teachest him out of thy law. Why? That thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. It says, Give this man rest in the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. Well, look, the pit ain't been dug for the wicked yet. Esau's still ruling. So this is saying somebody getting rest while the wicked is still ruling. <laughs> Not while they after they, we know we're going to get rest after the wicked taken out the way. But this is telling somebody they're going to get rest while the wicked is still in rulership. Let's read it again. Because it says, blesses the man whom thou chastenest, O Yahweh, and teaches him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity. Until the pit be dig for the wicked. So having this, these scriptures, the knowledge, this truth, this peace, the Lord have given us rest, a certain comfort, a form of comfort, until we get the awesome and comfort when he come back and destroy the wicked, man. Like it said in Thessalonians, uh, who, you who are troubled, rest with us. How are we resting? With this truth, man. That's the peace. Let me see if I can snag it. Second Thessalonians 1. And six, seeing it, seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. And we are the ones who troubled, man. So we, but, but the Lord have given us rest <laughs> in a place that's not our rest, man, by where these scriptures. But it says, when the Lord Yahweh shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. And that's what we're waiting on. So we have rest until Yahweh Shah come back. And give us the ultimate rest, man. You know? But that's pretty much all I got. I ain't, you know, wanna um, go over. That's pretty much all I got. Lord willing. You know, this lesson was edifying, man. I'm gonna read that John 16 again, because I really don't want to end it. <laughs> I wanna keep going, but I'm gonna read this again. John 16 and 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace, but in the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world, man. You see, so the Lord told us, look, we have we gonna have to go through shit. But going through it, we still gonna have him as our comfort and help, man. But he said, Don't trip, be a good cheer. He overcame the world. So what that mean for us as his servants, man? We go overcome the world too, Lord willing. You see, but Lord willing as a lesson was that a fine. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Chakwadash, double honors to the apostles, and elders of great millstone, and peace and blessings to all you I came out there pushing this word. With all truth and sincerity. And with that, shalom.